here. Oh yeah, that's nice. So we're good to go there. What up gang, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since uh, just trying to get everything going. <laughs> I had some stuff come up, our power went out. Right before that, we got a new member of the family, so. And that has been keeping us up. Let me show you. Xander. Hi, buddy. Xander is a 15 week old English Mastiff male. So we ended up driving to Indiana to pick him up. It's been four years, a little four and a half years since our last Mastiff. I felt like it was time. So yeah, he's uh, he's finally to the point to where he's sleeping like eight hours a night. And so <laughs> when we first got him, I was getting up at, we'd go to bed at like 10 o'clock and he'd get up at three, five o'clock in the morning, you know, uh, not at a, a good time <laughs> to get solid sleep. So, so there was that. Um, and then we ended up getting a round of sickness here. I don't know exactly what it was, uh, but yeah, we all got colds and they lasted for kind of, uh, I don't know, like a couple weeks. And then uh, we lost power. So yeah, uh, between all that, yeah, it's been kind of hard to uh, get things up on the internet and get this thinking engine go in and going. So I'm finally doing that. So that's where we're at right now. Show you guys the progress that I'm at. All right, so I ended up cleaning up the secondary. Turned out amazing. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy about that. Got that thing off. This thing was actually locked up like when I took it apart. I mean, for one, I had to kind of bang it off of the sled itself, but then once I got it off, cleaned up the shaft really nicely, it was all rusted, and then uh, ended up taking this apart, but it, I took the nuts off and stuff, and it didn't even want to move, so I had to work that loose, um, got it all cleaned up, put it back together, it's ready to go. I got the engine mounted in, uh, got the carburetors cleaned up, got them filled up with fuel. I just put this one in right here, so um, cleaned off from both of the caps here. So I just got this carburetor in, uh, cleaned up these boots, fixed the boots, and uh, I already set the center to center on these clutches here. So that's where I'm at right now, so I'll stick around. And uh, yeah, once I get these this other carburetor in, I'm gonna put the clutch in, get the uh, exhaust finished up, and then, I did not have an extra starter coil. Well, I the one that I actually, I ended up getting two from my boys at West Michigan Snowmobile. You need any parts, contact them. Eric and Keith Lauderbilt. So they ended up giving me two, but the issue was that I my 800 ended up, the one on my 800 busted, so I had to use one of those. And so the other one I put on the other one of these. But I do have a couple parts, kind of, you know, quote unquote part sleds that I can just pull one off of, so that's what I'm gonna end up doing. But I still gotta get the starter on there. Uh, but other than that, yeah, we're, uh, we're getting close to rocking and rolling here. This thing's looking pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get that stuff on and then we'll show you the finished product. All right, guys, so all is good. At this point, I got the second carburetor on here. Everything's looking nice and clean, ready to go. I got the starter on as well. That's ready to go. Um, that's all locked up. I have both clutches here ready to go. I What I did, though, I kind of ran into a snag here. And it's not that big of a deal, but what I did is I ended up taking an extra wire link that goes from the drive shaft to the speedometer here and it's just a little square wire just like that's on the inside of these right here so it's like that it's about two inches long well i stuck it in the end to see if i could uh spin that and i couldn't spin it and then i left it in there and when i turned this secondary clutch here it didn't spin either so i was like oh crap all right so let me see what i got going on here so i ended up taking it off and there wasn't any grease in there and the bearing didn't look bad didn't seem loose or anything uh, there was not one of those wire links in there so i tried to take my extra and put it in there and it wouldn't fit so i'm thinking what happened is they replaced the bearing or they probably replaced replaced the bearing in it because it's still in good condition and this locked up and they weren't able to fit a new little wire pin 
link in there because I tried to fit mine in there and it wouldn't go. So I was like, all right, I'm going to have to drill it out. So I ended up taking a little tiny drill bit and I tried to drill it out and it completely went in like there was nothing in there. I was like, okay, so there's not anything in there. Well, long story short, I had to kind of use the pin that I had and file it and I got it to move to the point to where I put it in a set of vice grips, needle nose vice grips, and I was able to kind of cram it in there and that loosened everything up to where it was able to slide in normal. So I'm not sure if there was just a little bit of rust on the edge there or what the situation was, but I got that in there. Um, I took this Speedo off and a lot of the times they'll just kind of freeze up if they're not used, like from whether it be from gunk or whatever. So what I like to do is get a square drill bit and put it in the end of one of these with a screwdriver attachment and then get it moving. Well, it moved really easy. So I ended up just hitting it with a bunch. I warmed it up, hit it with some chain lube, worked that in there and the thing spins great. And so long story short, <laughs> I ran into that. Uh, the, this cable was froze up, and so I had to get that moving. Pu I pulled the whole cable out of the sheath, and it was rusted and like grimy rust right about here. So I took the whole thing out. I cleaned the wire cable off, and the sheath, once I got the, the cable clean, I took the sheath and stuck it in there with some PB Blaster and just worked it back and forth real good. And then I hit it with some carb cleaner, blew the whole thing out, and then just lubed the cable with a tiny, tiny bit. I just left, honestly, what I did is I just left the PB Blaster on there and I coated it again and just wiped it down. And it moves really good. So now we're, we're in good shape here. See it moving? So we're good to go. So that took a minute. Uh, the next thing I got to do is I got to run to the store and grab some shims here because there's like, gosh, maybe close to three eighths of an inch difference that I need to make up when I use my clutch alignment tool. I just put the, I'll see for sure. I'm going to go get some extras anyways. These are one inch. This is a one inch shaft. So I'm going to have to get some one inch machine bushings and that's what I usually use. So, but yeah, making some progress. So I'm going to go grab those. And then we'll get these clutches lined up and we'll be very close. Only thing left to do is the exhaust. And I could just put the exhaust on just to make sure it you know, runs good and everything. But I'm going to try and uh, get the exhaust finished up. I'd like to refinish the muffler and the actual expansion pipe as well. So, All right, guys. Stay tuned. All right. So this is what I got from Menards. These are 1 inch by 1.5 by 18 gauge machine bushings i got 10 of them not exactly sure how many i'm gonna need but we're about to find out all right guys so this is where we're at it ended up taking five shims back there and then that gives me an eighth of an inch play and when i take my alignment tool that gives me that's as far over as it'll go so split that in half that's your 16th of an inch, so the belt will be riding perfect right there. So we'll get this other one bolted up. Just have to account for a couple of washers on this side. That way it can move back and forth. Because if not, then this washer that goes on the outside will just push this all the way in to where there's no gap. And you don't want that. You want it to have free play to move back and forth an eighth of an inch. So I already got this primary clutch on here as well and torqued that down to 55 foot-pounds and then I loosened it and then torqued it again. That way you get an accurate torque. That's the proper procedure. Technically, you should probably uh, warm it up and then technically you should probably take it for a spin and then come back, loosen it, and then tighten it again to the 55 foot-pounds. But usually this does the trick. You just... Torque it down to 55, loosen the bolt back up, and then torque it to 55 again. You're good to go. All right, so we're moving forward. Those clutches turned out nice, though. All right, so I got it on there, and... Got nice movement back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and check the alignment once again. 
Oh yeah, that's nice. And then, like I said, it moves back and forth. Eighth of an inch. That's what you want. I am happy with that. Now it's time to put the belt on. All right, so what I do, first and foremost, you wanna make sure that your belt is in the right direction. With these Arcticat belts, this is a 0627021. -021. You want this uh, arrow to be facing towards the engine. And so I will get it over the primary first. Start it at the top. And, and then what I'll do is I'll push in and twist at the same time. And that'll open up this driven clutch. The belt falls in there and stops it. And then you just grab it. And then you just kind of pull it back and it'll end up to where the belt sits. The top of the belt will sit about an eighth of an inch above the edge of this driven clutch. So you're good to go there. Look at this handsome little guy. He just sleeping away, huh? Is it too cold out here for you? <laughs> Sander? Right, he's definitely comfortable on that rug, no doubt about that. He's just chilling, he's doing good. I figured keeping him out here will help to expose him to different smells and different um, sounds. Like I let him see, there. I let him smell a little tiny bit of air that was coming out of the air nozzle. And then once he was comfortable with it, I kind of took it off into the corner and blew it a little bit harder a couple times. And then just little things, like I let him smell the drill and then gave it a little little bit of uh, sound so he could hear it. And just that stuff will help him get used to uh, all the different sounds that he's going to experience as he grows up. So he is a special little guy. He's getting big. We got him, let's see, today is the third i believe and we got him which is a friday we got him two weeks ago this past tuesday so we've had him for 17 days now and he was 43 pounds when we got him i weighed him this morning he's almost 55 pounds so he's putting weight on his dad is 225 230 at 34 inches at the shoulders like the just below the bottom of the neck on the top and then his dad's or his sire's sire, so Xander's grandsire, is 34 inches as well, but he's 245. So he's got the potential to become a pretty big boy. But no worries either way. Uh, we just want him to be healthy and happy and, you know, well structured. So he's got a long life ahead of him. He's sleeping it away. <laughs> Gotta sleep the girl though, that's for sure. All right, guys, so I think that's uh, it for now. I'm gonna button it up for the day. And um, yeah, I got the carburetors on, got the engine in, got the starter on, uh, cleaned up both clutches. I, well, clutches have been cleaned up, but I cleaned up the, the driven clutch and then figured out why the speedometer wasn't working and got that all ready to rock. Everything's conditioned and good to go. So we're getting there, folks, we're getting there. It's almost there, so I'm pretty excited because it's been a while. Uh, really, the only thing left, like I said, is just the exhaust. The, uh, put the hood back on and the windshield. And then I, it's missing the brake lever, so that's definitely gonna have to be put on there for sure. So, well, we can start it up before that. So then put cooling in and we're good to go. It's already got fresh gasoline in there, so. All right, guys, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the alert bell, that way you get notifications to your phone and mobile updates, blah, blah, blah. Don't forget to smash the like button, always appreciate that. Check us out on Instagram and on TikTok. I got some stuff going up there pretty regularly, so. All right, you guys come on back. We'll see you in the next video, okay? Take care. Come on back. Yeah, bye.